Hi everyone, today's lesson is line of best fit. So we are gonna talk about what the line of best fit is and also how we can use this line to write an equation and make predictions and answer questions about the data. So this is the worksheet that you're looking at. It's called line of best fit. If you have this worksheet, you should have it out in front of you right now. You will also need a pencil, obviously, and a ruler or something straight, straight edge, you know, even if it's an index card, just something that you can use to make a straight line. Because with scatter plots, we haven't drawn lines up until this point, but with the line of best fit, now we're gonna have to start drawing some lines. Um, if you don't have a copy of this worksheet, that's okay. You can still follow along and you can still learn about the line of best fit and how you can use that line to write an equation. All right, here's the problem. We're gonna write an equation for the line of best fit shown on the graph below. Use your equation to predict the number of visitors if the price of admission is increased to $12. All right, so let's take a look at our graph and see what's going on here. We've got our two variables. We have our X variable across the bottom of the graph, and that's the admission price. And then going up the side, we've got the number of visitors. So apparently this is some sort of admission price, whether it's to a museum or a concert or an amusement park. Um, and then they're talking about the number of visitors based on that price. So the first thing I'm noticing when I look at this graph right here is that my points are generally going downward, right? So I'm seeing a negative correlation here. That's the first thing that I notice. And this line right in the middle here is called the line of best fit. So I'm actually going to just take a minute and I'm gonna highlight that line for you so that you can really see what it is that I'm referring to here. I'll try to do it the best I can here, but this highlighted yellow line here, that's our line of best fit. And sometimes they call that a trend line. It means the same thing. So if you hear the word trend line or you hear the word line of best fit, um, that's what they're referring to. And the line of best fit or the trend line goes right through the center of the data, right through the middle of the data. Um, and again, if you look up at the top, more towards the top of the page where I've got my little star here, let's highlight this, okay? So the line of best fit, just a definition, is a line that crosses through the middle of the plotted points. And it's also called a trend line. So the line of best fit is gonna have some of the points on the scatter plot above it, and then some of the points are gonna be below it, right? It's gonna be like as close to the center of the data as you can possibly put it. All right, another thing about the trend line. We can use this trend line, now that we have a line through the center of our data, to write an equation. So let's write an equation for this relationship. So this is gonna kind of take us back to previous lessons where we were writing uh, linear equations in slope intercept form, remember y equals mx plus b. So what we wanna do first of all is we wanna pick out two really good points that are on the trend line. And these points do not have to be points that were on the scatter plot. Um, you just wanna look for points on the trend line. So as I'm looking at this trend line right here, I think this is a really good point right here because it's right on an intersection. And I think I'm gonna do my points in a different color. I'll do them in blue. But I think this point right here is beautiful. And I know that's not a point that was plotted originally in my scatter plot, but it doesn't have to be. I'm looking for perfect points on this trend line at this point. And I think this one up here is another really good one. Right, because I want my points to be on perfect intersections on my graph. So we want to find the slope of this line. Now there's a couple ways we can find the slope. I could write ordered pairs for each of these two points, and then I could use my slope formula, right? So that's one way I could do that. So let's do that over here first of all. Now if you remember your slope formula, right, we're going to do m equals and we're going to do the change in y over the change in x. So let's write an ordered pair for each of these. The ordered pair for this point here would be positive six, and then the y value would be positive 50, right? Because right in between 40 and 60 over here would be a 50. So my first ordered pair, I'm just gonna write it up here, is gonna be a positive six and a positive 50. And then my second ordered pair is this one. And this one is at positive one, right? And then up here, right between 80 and 100 is 90. 
So this other point that I have is at positive 1 and positive 90. Now remember when we use our slope formula, we're going to do y minus y over x minus x. And I think I'm going to go from this ordered pair from the 190 to the 650. So on the top, I'm going to subtract my two y's, and that's going to be 90 minus 50. And then on the bottom, I'm going to subtract my two x's, and that's going to be 1 minus 6. And 90 minus 50 is going to give me 40. And 1 minus 6 is going to give me negative 5. And when I divide those, I'm going to get negative 8. And that makes perfect sense that my slope is negative because my line's going down, right? When I first looked at it, the first thing I said was this has a negative correlation or a negative relationship. So it makes perfect sense that my slope is going to be negative 8. Now, another way we could have found our slope is not using the slope formula. And I could have just used these two points on the graph, right? So I could have just started at this point and I could have gone straight down. And then that's not very straight, but and then I could have gone straight over, right? And I could have just counted my change in y over my change in x. So if I was going from 50 to 90, this is a change of 40 right here. And on the bottom, if I'm going from 1 to 6, that's a change in 5, right? And so if I'm going down 40 and over 5, the other way I could have done this is I could have said negative 40, right? My vertical change over my horizontal change, and that also gives me negative 8. So either way, I'm getting negative 8 for my slope, whether I count the spaces on the graph or if I use my slope formula. All right, so now that we have our slope, we're going to start out with our favorite formula, slope-intercept form, and we're going to just set up our equation here, y equals mx plus b. I'm going to make a couple notes on the side here. The first note I'm going to make is that my slope is negative 8 because I just figured that out. And then the second thing I want to do is I want to pick one of my ordered pairs to use. So I can either use the 650 or the 190, whichever one you want to use. It totally doesn't matter. I'm going to do the 650. So what I have going on here is everything I need for my to write my equation here. I've got my slope, which is my m. My ordered pair gives me an x value and a y value. And I'm going to plug in these numbers, and we're going to see what happens. So in place of this y, I'm going to put a 50. I get that from the ordered pair. In place of m, I'm going to put negative 8. We just figured out that's the slope. And in place of my x, I'm going to put the 6, also from the ordered pair. And I'm going to bring down plus b, because that's what we need to figure out is what that y-intercept is. I'm going to bring down my 50. And negative 8 times positive 6 is negative 48. Bring down my plus b. And to solve this equation, I just need to add 48 to each side. And when I add a positive 50 and a positive 48, that gives me b equals 98. And again, that makes perfect sense because if I look at my graph, look where my y-intercept is. It's all the way up here, right? That looks like about 98 to me, right? Just a little bit under that 100. So our equation then, when I put these two together, I always say once I have a slope and I have a y-intercept, I've got all of my ingredients. Right, everything that I need for a perfect equation. So my equation is going to be y equals negative 8x plus 98. There we go. There's our equation for this trend line. Right, I'll even write it underneath here. y equals negative 8x plus 98. All right, so now we're going to use this equation to predict the number of visitors if the price is raised to $11. Because our graph doesn't go up to 11, right? It would be like over here somewhere, and then we'd have to kind of figure out where this line is going to come down to. But we don't really have to worry about trying to extend our graph. We can just use our equation. So let's use that equation. So I'm going to start out by writing my equation, which is y equals negative 8x plus 98. And if they're saying that the price is going to be raised to $11, right, the price, that's the number across the bottom. That's our x value. So I'm going to take this 11 and I'm going to substitute it in place of our x in the equation, right? So this is $11. I'm going to put the 11 right here in place of our x. And the rest of our equation is just going to come right on down. So y equals negative 8. And notice whenever I'm replacing a number, I always put it in parentheses. I did that up here too, right? Because I want to remember that I'm multiplying these together. 
So we've got y equals negative 8 times 11 is negative 88 plus 98. And when I add negative 88 and positive 98, I get positive 10. So that would be our prediction, is that if the price is raised to $11, it looks like there'd be about 10 visitors. based on that equation. All right, so that is our line of best fit, our trend line, right? That's another word for trend line. And then we picked out two good points right on intersections. We wrote an equation using the slope and then finding the y-intercept. And then we made a prediction, right? And we have to make a prediction. It's called an extrapolation when it's something that's beyond the graph. If they were asking us a question like, Oh, about how many visitors do you think there would be if the admission price was, say, $7, right? You would go here to 7 on the, on the bottom here for $7, and then you would just go up and look at your line, and you would kind of predict that. Like, oh, maybe about 42 people or something like that. You would just make a prediction based on the graph. That's called an interpolation. But when it's something beyond the graph, something that's not included in the graph that you're looking at, that's called an extrapolation. And you can remember that because it's like something extra, right? Not on the graph, it's like extra from the graph. Okay, let's look at this next one. So we've got a problem here where we're going to have to draw the line of best fit, and then we're going to write an equation, and we're going to use that equation to predict the weight of a puppy when he is one year old. Because we've got the age of the puppy in months, and then we've got the weight of the puppy in pounds on the y-axis. And so we're just going to find a nice straight line of best fit right through the middle here. So take your index card or take your ruler, whatever it is that you're using to make a nice straight line, and see if you can make a perfectly straight line of best fit right through the center of this data. Right? Do the best you can. I'm going to use my line tool on here, and hopefully it doesn't mess up my... No, I think it's going to be okay. All right, so I'm going to try to draw a line of best fit here. So there's a line. I'm going to kind of move it around a little bit here and see. Um, and I want to make sure I've got some points above the data and some points below the data, right? I just want to do like the best I can with my points. So I don't know. I think that's a pretty good trend line right there, right? I've got some above. I've got some below might be able to come down just slightly, maybe slightly, a little bit more. And again, it's not going to be perfect, right? You're just going to do the best you can with your trend lines. I'll say that's pretty good, I think. All right, so now that I drew my trend line, now we're going to write an equation. So I'm going to look on my trend line for some good points. And remember, it doesn't have to be points that were on the graph. It doesn't have to be any of these black dots that are on here. All I'm looking for are good points on my trend line. So if I look, I think this is a pretty good point right here. I'm going to mark off that point. And again, you guys can mark off any points you want. I also think this one's a pretty good one right here, like right in the middle. So I think I'm going to use these two. We'll see what happens. We'll see if it works out for us. Okay, first thing we have to do is we have to find the slope. So I'm going to write two ordered pairs. So my ordered pair for this first point is going to be positive 1, positive 5. So I'm going to make a little note up here that my first ordered pair is positive 1, positive 5. And the second ordered pair I have right here looks like positive 5, positive 10, I would say. All right, and then we're going to find our slope. So I'm going to do slope equals. I'm going to subtract my y's on the top. So I'm going to do 10 minus 5 on the top. And then I'm going to subtract my x's on the bottom. So that's going to be 5 minus 1. And 10 minus 5 is 5. And 5 minus 1 is 4. And I can leave it like that. Or if I wanted to, I could make that into a decimal, right? Because we're writing an equation here. So I could say that m equals 1.25. And it's a real world situation, right? Because normally I wouldn't make a slope from a fraction into a decimal. I would normally keep it as a slope. But because this is a real world problem about age and weight, I think the 1.25 is appropriate. All right, so there's our slope. 
So now we're going to write our equation. Let's start with our slope-intercept form equation, which is y equals mx plus b. And I'm going to make some notes here, like I did before. My slope is 1.25. We just figured that out. And then I'm going to choose one of my ordered pairs to use. I can use the 1.5 or the 5.10. So I think I'll use the 1.5, nice small numbers, make my life easy. So there's an x, there's a y. So I've got the slope. I've got an x value, I've got a y value. So we're going to start substituting these values into our equation. So instead of this y, I'm going to put a 5. Instead of the m, I'm going to put a 1.25, that's our slope. And then right up against it in parentheses, I'm going to put 1 for my x value, right? And I get the, the 1 and the 5 from the ordered pair, right? The x comes from the ordered pair and the y comes from the ordered pair plus b, that's the only thing we don't know, right? When we have this equation, y equals mx plus b, there's four variables in this equation. I know three of them. I know the m, I know the x, I know the y. So the only one we need to figure out is the b. All right, there's five coming down. 1.25 times one is still 1.25 plus b. And I'm gonna subtract 1.25 from each side to get my variable by itself. And if I do 5 minus 1.25, that gives me 3.75 equals b. So again, I've got all the ingredients for my equation, right? I've got my slope up here. Let's circle it, right? Our slope was 1.25. I've got my y-intercept, which is 3.75. So my equation is going to be y equals 1.25. 25x plus 3.75. And remember, that means our initial value, our y-intercept, right, our starting point is 3.75. So 3.75 pounds, and then from there, it increases by 1.25 each month. All right, so now let's make a prediction. So the question is, um, how much is this puppy going to weigh when he's a year old? Well, first of all, hopefully we all realize that a year is 12 months, right? Hopefully we realize that. So let's, let's figure it out. Here we go. We're going to make our prediction. So I'm going to start out with my equation. y equals 1.25x plus 375. And since x is representing the months, I'm going to replace that with a 12, right? Make sure you don't replace it with a 1. Like I know they're talking about him being one year old. But we're in months here, so we have to make sure that we put 12 there. All right, here we go. Now, at this point, you might want to break out a calculator if you have one, or maybe you're just really good and you can do 1.25 times 12 in your head. It's 15. And then we're going to finish off our equation here by adding 15 and 3.75, and that's going to give us 18.75. So our prediction is that in one year, the puppy is going to be 18.75 pounds. So almost 19 pounds. All right, so there's two examples of how to draw a line of best fit or a trend line and then how to use two ordered pairs from that trend line. And I, I think the one thing I just want to make sure that you really understand is the points you choose, they do not have to be points that were on the scatter plot. You just want to pick points on your line of best fit. And you want to make sure you're picking perfect points, right on perfect intersections on your graph so that you can really, um, so that you can really find your slope easily and find your y-intercept and try to get the most accurate equation you can. Sometimes your line's going to be like a little wacky, right? Like you might, you might write your equation and it just might not make any kind of sense, right? And that'll tell you that you made a mistake somewhere. You know, if we picked two points and we did our first step to find our slope and then we found our y-intercept and we came up with some crazy number for our y-intercept like 12, we should realize that that makes no kind of sense, right? Because based on this graph, there's no way the y-intercept would be up here. Do you know what I mean? So just make sure that it's reasonable is what I'm saying. All right. Hopefully you guys um, understood everything that I said today. And if you didn't, be sure to reach out to your teacher or to me if I'm your teacher. And, um, and we will get everything all cleared up for you. Have a great day, everyone.